Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about 10 different fragrances that have aged like fine wines. Fragrances that have been out for years and years, yet they still work. They still sell. People still really enjoy them. They've aged about as well as me. Oh wait, no, that's not right. I feel like chewed up bubble gum. They've aged better than me. So let's jump into this and check out 10 different fragrances that have aged amazingly well. Maybe in the future I'll do 10 different fragrances that have aged like rotting cheese. Does rotting cheese smell bad? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Well, maybe it does. Depends on the cheese. Now this first fragrance is super obvious, but I still have to feature it. It was my signature scent back when I was a teenager and I worked in the mall. I was there basically every day. So I was a mall rat like the Kevin Smith movie. People loved it then. It was basically the best seller at the time and it's basically the best seller now. Well, uh, basically the best seller of all time. <laughs> Maybe not uh, in each particular store nowadays, but it still sells, that's what I'm saying. It's Aqua de Jo from Giorgio Armani. Citrus, sea notes, white florals, musks and woods. Some of the notes in this fragrance. And you know that this thing still works today because you have flankers coming out that are basically just little riffs on this DNA. Just a little switch here, a little tweak there, boom, a new fragrance. This is still one of the best sellers at most retail stores. If you sort by best selling, you're gonna find this one right up toward the top and it still outsells all the new versions of the fragrance, at least at those retailers. So of course, Aqua de Joe has aged well. If it hadn't, people wouldn't be buying it like it just came out. I mean, you would think this stuff is still brand new. The next one is, is kind of a riff on Aqua de Joe as well, or at least the reasoning for Aqua de Joe being in here. It is Davidoff Cool Water. So what I meant by that reasoning behind it is that this has been out for a long time now, and yet it still sells like hotcakes. Now, a lot of that, of course, is gonna be people that wore the fragrance when it was new, and they still wear it now. But on the flip side, you have lots of people who are just getting into fragrances, who are picking up cool water and thinking, man, that's a sick scent. And it doesn't cost that much, assuming you're buying it from a discounter. Seawater, lavender, mint, sandalwood, and musk, some of the notes in this fragrance, along with a bit of tobacco, actually. And this one has a very strong similarity to Creed's Green Irish Tweed, which is a personal favorite of mine. So of course, I'm gonna say it's aged well. I am completely biased here. Yeah, for sure. Still though, cool water absolutely still works today. And it's another fragrance like Aqua de Joe that constantly has new flankers coming out because they just don't want to end that line. It's a cash cow. Now this next one is not a bestseller, but I think that it still works today just as well as when it came out in the uh, mid nineties. It is XS from Paco Rabanne. Now this is the new style bottle. This is not how it looked originally, of course. They've kind of taken a lot of their excess or all their excess fragrances, I should say, and put them into this style bottle. Previously, they were taller and skinnier. And I gotta say, this look definitely is more modern, though some people are gonna prefer that old school style. Mint, bergamot, juniper, citrus, and rosemary, some of the notes in this fragrance. And this one, like cool water, smells like a much more expensive Creed fragrance. This one smells similar to Himalaya. Now Himalaya did come along much later on than XS, so it's one of those circumstances where Creed maybe uh, was a little bit inspired by something else. So Creed released Himalaya in 2002. Obviously that one is still for sale for Creed, XS still for sale uh, for Paco Rabanne, and I think that it still works today. It's very clean, musky, and a little bit sharp, but I think it smells fantastic. And uh, Excess is one that even to this day I smell and I think, yeah, yeah, that still works. Now let's go with a fragrance that's a little bit older. This one, again, from Davidoff, it is Zeno. Rosewood, lavender, patchouli, sandalwood. Some of the notes in this fragrance. Now this smells quite a bit similar to Tom Ford's Beau de Jour, only way more affordable. Ooh, way more affordable. Because this costs almost nothing. 
I mean, it's a dab it off, go to a discount or pay $18 or something, $20. Yes, this is much older than Bodazor, so Bodazor is going to have a little bit more of a, a modern edge to it, if you wanna call it that. Obviously, the quality is gonna be a little bit higher on that Tom Ford as well, but that's why you're paying the price tag on the Tom Ford. This stuff smells fantastic, really gentlemanly. It has this aromatic edge to it that is just absolutely stunning in a formal situation, business situation, office situation. It's really good during the spring, during the fall. You've got a lot of versatility here. Some people would say that it's more of a mature fragrance and I wouldn't argue that, but I do think it still works fantastically today. Next up, personal favorite of mine, Jungle by Kinzo. Cinnamon, citrus, nutmeg, cardamom, and woods, some of the notes in this bad boy right here. Now this one, it kind of takes the feeling of a number of fragrances from the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, warm, spicy, woodsy fragrances. It takes DNA and bits and pieces from a bunch of those fragrances that I love and kind of puts them all into here. So you have a conglomeration of a bunch of different fragrances. Now I'm not gonna get into specifics on saying it smells 10% like this and 5% like that and 6% like this, but I think that I would wear this fragrance pretty much the exact same times I would wear Gucci Envy. It's kind of in that overarching style of Gucci Envy. It doesn't smell <laughs> very uh, similar to Gucci Envy, maybe like little bits and pieces, but I would wear it in pretty much the same places, the same times. And I think it just smells fantastic. I think that nowadays it's a great change up, a great switch up from uh, what most fragrances smell like that are being released new. And I think that it would do wonderfully in setting you apart a little bit. Again, this one might be more attractive to people middle-aged and older. Younger people may not gravitate toward it because it's not uh, sweet enough, but I think it's awesome and cheap. Let's get with another big hitter, another uh, big bestseller, Armani Code. Second, Giorgio Armani on the list. This one doesn't need too much of an introduction, like, you know, Aqua de Jo didn't either, or Cool Water. This stuff has been a top seller since it came out. You have lots of iterations of this out. The DNA is still firmly intact with the new releases that are coming out in this line. So you've got Code Eau de Parfum and then uh, Code Absolute, Code Profumo, that still have that original Code DNA firmly intact. And that tells you all you need to know because if this DNA is still being used in current releases that are selling very well, then you know the fragrance has aged well. It's got star anise, leather, tonka, tobacco, and some citruses in here. It is a great night out fragrance, big attention grabber, compliment puller. A lot of people have used it for dates or clubbing or just going out on the town in general, but it has that versatility where you can use it during the daytime. And frankly, it's office safe as well, so long as you don't go too crazy on the trigger. So Armani Code, absolutely, this stuff still rocks. Gotta go with another huge hit of a fresh fragrance, Low DC from Issey Miyake. Yuzu Lotus Vetiver and Musk, this stuff is still just stunning. It's a fragrance where if you haven't smelled it for a really long time, you go back to it, give it a whiff. It's like you're smelling it for the first time all over again. Yes, it has this, this amazing citrus opening, which is so eye-opening and attention-grabbing. It's what draws so many people into the fragrance. It's what made this a great bestseller. But as it dries down, you get these florals that come out underneath it, kind of this subtle, clean, uh, watery floral aspect to the fragrance. And then it dries down to a really, really, really pleasant, woodsy, clean vetiver and musk combo. Low DC, again, a fragrance that spawned so many flankers, both in the low DC and then the Nuit DC line that followed. And that one is forever tied to Aqua de Jo in my mind. I've said this before, but I mean, you really just need to look at the presentation on these. I mean, come on. And about the time that I was wearing this like crazy, I also had a bottle of this, though Aqua de Jo was my preference between the two. And uh, it seemed like so many people were either team uh, Low DC or team Aqua de Jo. And speaking of fragrances that were huge when I used to work in the mall, Ooh, the hugest of them all, possibly. 
fierce. Yeah, Abercrombie and Fitch fierce. This stuff still works. I mean, you have so many people buying Mont Blanc Legend because it's a more affordable a take on the fierce DNA that tells you again all you need to know. People love this stuff so much that they're still buying both this and alternatives to this and wearing it religiously. Fur, citrus, musk, vetiver, and woods, some of the notes in this fragrance. And Abercrombie and Fitch has really seemed to hinge all of their mint fragrances, at least lately on fierce go to the abercrombie and fitch website at least as of this video what you're gonna find underneath the men's fragrances is fierce 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 just all fierce you got the original and then like 5,000 flankers you might think oh maybe abercrombie and fitch is going to be pushing authentic or authentic night no maybe they're going to be pushing first instinct or the number of flankers that they put out in the first instinct line wrong apparently it's fierce or die so abercrombie has made their decision and uh, I, I guess i can't really blame them because fierce absolutely has the most cachet you know the most name recognition as far as abercrombie and fitch fragrances go or just mall fragrances in general so yeah fierce obviously still works today and if you come within 200 miles of an Abercrombie and Fitch store, you'll smell it. This next one, absolute masterclass of a fragrance. It is from Hermes and it is Terre d'Hermes, just the original. Orange, pepper, vetiver, and cedar. Some of the notes in this fragrance, it has kind of an earthy, flinty orange when you spray it on. Some people would say a, a dirty orange. Then as it dries down, it becomes all about that vetiver. This is one of the quintessential gentlemanly, uh, sophisticated fragrances. You can't overstate how versatile that fragrance is. You can wear it in any situation. Casual, formal, date night, daytime, nighttime, basically any season just to just braise up or down. It's great. Now it is a little divisive. Some people don't like that opening. Like I said, some people say it's, it's dirty and they'll go, ooh, I don't like that orange. I like my citrus a sweet and easy to wear. Frankly though, I think this stuff is amazing. And if you do want an easier to wear version, not that this is difficult, but if you need one that's, you know, washed and clean, removing any of that flintiness, that earthiness, get Eau Très Fraiche. Terre d'Hermes obviously though still works today and so many people will hold up like almost any gentlemanly smelling designer release and go, yeah, that's okay, but it ain't Terre d'Hermes, am I right? Last up, another personal favorite, Fahrenheit. Now I know some people are gonna be like, no man, Fahrenheit has not aged well. It is obviously an 80s fragrance and I poo poo on that. I poo poo on 80s, poo 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 poo. Well, that's that's what they say, that's not what I say. Violet leaf, leather, nutmeg, and lavender. Some of the notes here. It's got that fantastic petrol opening, gasoline smell. And the first time I smelled Fahrenheit years ago, man, that got me hooked immediately. I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> huffing gas is not good. It kills your brain cells. And yet, when I smelled Fahrenheit and it smelled kind of like gasoline, I was like, yeah, you know I'm gonna get a good whiff of that. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, I just loved it. Thought it was just a uh, killer, killer. It was like a uh, fragrance of legend, you know, Fahrenheit, everybody talking about it. And, you know, growing up, I would see this bottle in stores and look at that, I mean, that's, that's cool looking. That gradient from yellow to red, eventually into kind of a black at the top there. It just looks awesome. Everything about it. Now Fahrenheit sadly has taken a backseat to Dior Sauvage and Dior Homme. And uh, that's nothing against Sauvage or Homme. Love both those lines. But man, I wish we would get some new Fahrenheit. And I mean new Fahrenheit that's actually worth getting hyped about because Fahrenheit cologne, kind of a letdown. So Fahrenheit unfortunately has not been allowed the same success here recently as some of these other fragrances as far as their flankers go. Yes, Fahrenheit Le Parfum is 
uh, a fantastic fragrance. It's killer. We love it. Everybody loves it. We all know that. But that's not really a mainline fragrance that's that's easy to get and really being promoted heavily or anything. You know, which one is getting more play? Fahrenheit Le Parfum or Aqua de Jour Profundo? And I know Fahrenheit Le Parfum, Dior Homme Parfum, they, they're, you know, very particular releases. I get it, I get it, but still. I need a little new Fahrenheit, that's what I'm saying. And also, Fahrenheit still rocks. You may not agree with me on this one, but I think that it is still so unique and still stands out against all the other designer fragrances. If it had never come out and it were released today, people would be like, what the F is this? It would still absolutely capture people's attention. If it had never been released and was released now. So I think it's aged really well. So guys, those are 10 fragrances that I think have aged really well. They're not the only 10. This is not an exhaustive list of the 10 fragrances that have aged well and everything else has aged like, like milk. So I may do a follow-up video down the line, cover some more fragrances that aged really well, but I think these 10 are a good start. And frankly, I've been meaning to shoot this video for like five months. So I'm glad I got it done. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for hanging with me today. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.